So ownership rights. We learned that rights describe the nature of things that parties, people can do with land. And the, the main rights for a land register uh, are the rights of ownership. Now we've seen this illustration before. This describes the impact of the principal land. Now the principal land, here we have this polygon here, essentially is a, uh, a polygon, part of that rubber sheet that is draped over a whole jurisdiction. Now, as much as that's seen in two-dimensional nature in most plans, it actually con conveys a three-dimensional volume. So in most jurisdictions, you're looking at something that goes from the center of the earth, inscribes an arc through the edge of that polygon and goes up into the skies. So in Scottish law, it goes all the way through to the heavens. In English law, it, it stops at the sky. Uh, and far be it from me to say that that really is a reflection of the aspirations of each of the nations. Um, but the core point here is that what you have is a two dimensional uh, representation in most instances for your principal land, but it does convey that three dimensional volume of ownership. And that principle and conveys to the owner all rights in law and all rights not yet legalized. Uh, and so in theory, that set of rights is infinite. So you know, the owner has a right to do anything. You've got this kind of Pandora's box full of rights. Uh, you know, the only stipulation to that one is that you can't do anything which is illegal. So if, inf sorry, if the rights are infinite, how do we manage them? And this is where we get back to the conversation about the social contract that we had in the earlier slide, in that uh, all rights are a reflection of, of social norms. Uh, and as those rights become more important, they form part of that legal set of registrable rights. But how do those things change? So, Let's move back to this one. So in essence, as a right uh, starts to gain more social momentum, as it were, it goes through these stages till it gets to the, the, the stage of being you know, not just a legal right, but a legal right which is enshrined within the legislation framework. And so you can add to your, your broad group of legal, legal rights. So that then means that you're you have a list of registrable right types and they are finite because they're described by the legislation. Uh, and each of these right types represents this generic right. But the generic right itself can be modified to apply to specific scenarios. So, for example, you can have a right of access. That right of access is a generic right type. But you could also have a right of access for vehicles and pedestrians. And this modifies the generic right and makes it more specific. There is a right of access, but it is specifically for vehicles and pedestrians, not for cows or trains or hot air balloons. So in this manner, the generic right types can be made more specific, giving it a legal modification. And this can lead to an unlimited range of restricted modifiers. So this unlimited restriction produces infinite variability. Now, I know that sounds like quite a convoluted sentence, but we are applying specific, specific variations to known right types, and that allows us to tailor it to a whole range of different scenarios. So we can, as I've mentioned earlier, expand on this by adding new right types to the range of different rights uh, and also maintain flexibility by having the specificity associated with each rights type. So this gives us legal nuance and flexibility whilst maintaining a controlled list of legally registrable right types. Okay, so we've gone through the types. Now what about this kind of qualifications around registrable rights? Now read, uh, or Professor Ken Reed described two important qualifications for land ownerships that have generic modeling implications. And this, this is, this is, the initial one is severance of principal ownership. So a landowner may not always own all of a heritable property, even within his own boundaries. Heritable property capable of severance in this way is known collectively as separate tenements. This will become clearer in a moment. And rights held out with the own land. So a landowner may sometime hold rights in respect of heritable property beyond his own boundaries. Rights of this kind are known as pertinence. There is a third qualification, 
but this is tends to be jurisdiction dependent and this is considerations for strata and mineral ownership so there's special and separate rules that regulate the position of the owner of flatted properties and minerals so let's see how this works right we will look at each of those in turn